And Sony's PlayStation 5 appears to be the hot holiday season gift. It's now the best-selling gaming console in the U.S., breaking the all-time unit and sales record. It sold up to 2.5 million units in one day when it was released last month. One gaming expert says the PS5 has achieved the most sales for video game hardware in U.S. history. The console starts at about $400. If you can find it, right? That's the one you can't find. That's the big question. Can you find it? Right. So as you guys clearly see at the start of this video, that's right. Sony has not only set a new milestone, they have pretty much... Like, they sealed the deal at this point that the PS5 clearly was, like we said numerous times, the system to get. PlayStation 5 has broken the all-time unit and sales records by selling 2.5 million units in just 24 hours of being available to the masses when it first launched. That is insane for Sony, insane for the actual company itself. But like, again, like we said before, we knew this was coming based off of what, ladies and gentlemen? And that was the PlayStation 4, the insane run that Sony had with PlayStation 4. A lot of people don't understand how impactful PlayStation 4 was and how Sony in general, this is why a lot of executives that we know and love have either left the company. They wanted to leave on such an insane, you know, redemption type of level. They redeemed themselves tenfold with PlayStation 4, especially when you compare it to the PlayStation 3. I mean, if you compare PlayStation 3 Sony, right, you know, that version of Sony to the PS4 version, it is honestly night and day. Sony was confident at the beginning of the PlayStation 4's launch and then, you know, dropped to so many insane gems. And now we're going into PlayStation 5 and the bar has been set just higher based off of what we received from PlayStation 4. Tons of franchises, tons of games from the PlayStation 4. And now PS5 is going to be the next kid on the block, uh, you know, producing its own particular, you know, games. And then again, the future is just looking bright for them. And I'm happy for him in the long run. So congratulations to Sony. That is insane. Congratulations to everybody who actually got their hands on one. And speaking of those who got your hands on one, yes, like I said before in my previous video, um, the actual pre or not pre-orders, but the actual consoles were gonna be a lot, they're gonna be um available today. Um Best Buy did release the info um that uh you know you can get your hands on a ps5 today unfortunately though it was um obviously it was available at 9 a.m today and the actual site itself crashed as soon as 9 a.m began it literally crashed like everybody went to get their hands on a unit so if you haven't got yourself a you know if you weren't able to get your hands on a unit listen i like i said before I already knew it was going to be tough. I mean, it's the holiday season for one. Everybody wants the system. As you guys saw at the beginning of this video, this is the top, you know, this is the system everybody wants. This is the system to get. I already knew this was going to be an issue for them in the long run, but, you know, especially when we're in the midst of a pandemic, which is very crazy, too, if you think about it. Sony broke all these records in the midst of a pandemic. Imagine if the world was stable, how much they could have sold then. That, that That's even more scary about this. But to go back and stay on topic here, um, again, it's best a lot of you guys wait. I've said this before. I've spoken about this numerous times, and I still stand by what I've said before. It's best a lot of you guys wait until you get your hands on it. Give it, you know, obviously wait mid-2021 if possible. The reason why I said, you know, this, the reason why I believe 2021 is going to be a lot better for everybody getting their hands on it is because I see a lot of things, you know, stabilizing for the most part for all of you. And I can see you guys getting your being able to get your hands on the actual units as we go forward but as of right now though it's just going to be like finding a needle in a haystack at least in this particular case it's the you know it's going to be trending for a while the system and everybody wants it but don't worry you'll get your hands on it very very soon just uh, have faith all right so that's it for the playstation topic for there now sony is um I guess I have to turn this over to this particular topic here because a lot of you guys reached out to me about this. And that's CD Projekt Red. A lot of you asked me, am I buying Cyberpunk 2077? I know I've been very vocal about it in the past. I was like, eh, I don't know what's going on with CD Projekt Red. But, you know, I've said it before. Like, I was like, eh, they're looking kind of spooky. You know, they're cutting stuff out. They're reworking stuff. They're not really being transparent of why this stuff, like, why these certain things are not in the game anymore. Why they changed this. And now you're seeing that the game, you know, it's not really running that well. At least on consoles per se and even on pc is struggling 
but we now know why that's the case. Now again, one thing I get real, real tired of is a certain thing that CD Projekt Red has been posting on Twitter. They do this every time they launch or every time we get bad news for this particular game, they go, yeah, we're sorry, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I, I appreciate CD Projekt Red for being you know open. I do appreciate them for being transparent. I'm not faulting them for that. But the thing about this particular game and how they set this up, all that message does, I'm going to put on the screen for you guys, this message right here. All this message pretty much tells me is that they knew about all these issues. They knew that they weren't going to be able to meet up with anything. And they just, you know, instead they just launched the console or the game, should I say, um, in the shape that it was. And they knew they can get away with it at this point. And they didn't think, you know, we were all going to attack them for it. But again, like I told even the most diehard fans of this particular game, you guys are putting a lot of unnecessary pressure on this game. And granted, they have a lot to live up to. Now, I'm not judging the game. Obviously, I don't, ha I don't have it. I haven't played it yet. I do plan on playing it on PS5. I could play it right now on PC if I really, really want to. But the thing is, I won't be able to experience Cyberpunk in the, you know, all its glory. I have a 1070 Ti. I didn't get a chance to get my hands on a 3080 because, you know, shout out to the scalpers. I, will ha I haven't been able to upgrade to that. So I won't be able to appreciate the game for what it truly, you know, can offer. But I will say this, though, you know, eh, it's kind of like days gone all over again. You think about it. It looks like this game might be good. It just has a bunch of issues. You guys remember Days Gone was a good game. Had a lot of issues in its performance. But, you know, it was still enjoyable nonetheless. Cyberpunk can very well be just as that. I mean, a lot of people are sending a lot of good things about the game. And I do value a lot of these uh, individuals' opinions. Like my homie Blaze4K, he says it's great. Got dudes like ACO, DNA, they're saying that it's good. I got um, the Ash and Luca. I got Jay Fonz. You name it, everybody's saying that the game is good. So in that particular case, this might be a gem that's just, you know, plagued with some issues. And we might, you know, we just got to see and wait for everything to play itself out, especially with these patches until everything gets fixed. But when everything gets fixed, we'll see how it, you know, actually plays. But you know me, I'm waiting for the full-fledged next-gen patch, at least so I can experience it in all its glory. But as of right now, though, it is kind of, you know, it's kind of weird that we have to go through this right now with CD Projekt Red, especially when, you know, if you go back to the last time this game got delayed, it was a week before release. And this goes even more, you know, into why people are reacting the way they are. They delayed this game a week before it's released before. And it's like, well, damn, how did the game look at that time compared to how it's looking now with all the pop ups and glitches and crazy texture loading, you know? So again, and another thing I want to do, uh, add on to this too, I do believe that cross-gen games, especially with PS4 and PS5, I think they need to stop at this point. You guys are seeing how these games can look and how, game, you know, problematic it can be for the current-gen systems. The reason why I say current-gen is PS4 and Xbox One is because not everybody has a PS5 and a Series X yet. They're still next-gen systems. So for the current-gen systems, PS4 and Xbox One, these systems are limited, and I mean extremely limited, and granted, every console is limited, but what I'm saying is, what the PS4 and Xbox One can do, they've already been maxed out, their potential has been met, there's only so much you can do on those said platforms, it's best you wait for the next gen upgrade, and this is why I said again, why they should have pushed that strictly to next gen, and hell, I've been hearing reports that Halo Infinite might be, you know, next in line for this particular thing, or might be up for the, you know, might be up for this uh, type of situation. I support them completely if they want to make Halo Infinite strictly next gen only. I know those who say that they're going to miss out on sales, but if it comes at the price, if those sales come at the price of, you know, 343, you know, not being able to give you the complete vision of Halo Infinite and really showcase what the game can do, I don't think it's worthwhile. I think it's best for you to push that strictly for Series X. And granted, Series X really needs it, if you think about it. It really needs it. So that's just my particular case on that i have no problem with them doing that in general and i hope hopefully this is uh this sets a good message that you know for all these studios it's okay to drop the current gen systems it's okay we're going into next gen i know those who can't get their systems yet they will be able to get it in 2021 
but it's best. It's honestly best to let go of current gen games. I don't want to sound selfish as I say this, but I support this 110% as I believe this is the more smart route to go in terms of giving everybody what they truly want and that is performance and bang for their buck in the long run. All right. So there's my quick little thoughts on everything, you know, compact for you guys under 10 minutes. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And yes, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys on my next one. Until next time, this is Big Cloud Gaming. I am most certain signing out. I want to say thank you again for watching, supporting the channel, and y'all have a good one. I'm out of here.